Hello, and welcome to the second video in the Basic ECL Concepts video series. In this video, we get into more detail on ECL definitions, functions, and scoping rules. We will also discuss the definition naming conventions we have adopted to make our ECL code as readable as possible. Following consistent naming conventions has been proven to make code maintenance much more manageable. And the more readable your code is, the fewer comments are required to remind yourself, six months later, why you originally wrote your code the way you did. There are four fundamental definition types in ECL. These are the basic building blocks that we use to construct the logic of our ETL processing and queries. The first of these is Boolean. A Boolean definition is one whose expression results in a Boolean true-false value. True and false are Boolean constants in ECL. Our naming convention for Boolean definitions is, the name should begin with is, to indicate the true-false nature of the definition. The next definition type is value. A value definition always has an expression that results in a single numeric or string value. Our naming convention for value definitions is to represent the expression's value by the name so its use in subsequent code states what the value is. A record set definition always has an expression that results in a set of records. This expression may be a simple filter condition or an existing record set, or it may be any of the built-in functions that return a record set, such as the sort function. Our naming convention for record set definitions is to end the name with the name of the base data set from which the record set was derived, so you can easily identify the base data set and look at its definition to get the names of the fields. The fourth basic definition type is the set which defines a set of values, much like an array. These values are typically simple data types, but it may also be a set of data sets. Sets are delimited by square brackets. Each element in the set must be the same type of data, which may be constant values or expressions. Our naming convention for set definitions is the name should begin with set to indicate the definition is a set of values. Now to make things a little more complex, let's talk about functions. The definition of a function in ECL is any definition that receives parameters is automatically a function in that it has been genericized so as to be more flexible. The parameters are specified within parentheses attached to that definition's name. Multiple parameters are separated by commas. Each parameter may specify the data type. If omitted, the default data type is integer. The parameter's name is always required since that is how the past value is referenced in the definition's expression. A parameter may be given a default value, which is the only way to make a parameter omittable. In this example, the addNums function takes two parameters. The first is an integer named add2 with no default value, so it may not be omitted. The second parameter, named val to add, has no specified data type, so it defaults to the integer type. But it does have a default value specified, 5, so it may be omitted. Therefore, in numResult1, with both parameters passed, the result is 30. But in numResult2, the second parameter is omitted, which defaults the val to add parameter to the value 5, producing 10. Definitions are organized into modules, which allows us to group related code. Referencing an attribute requires the use of object.property syntax, as in module.definition. There are three levels of attribute visibility, defined by use of the keywords export and shared. An export definition is globally available, once import has made the module in which it resides available to the current code. A shared definition is only available within its own module. A local definition has neither the export 
nor shared keywords. Therefore, its visibility terminates at the end of the, the very next export or shared definition. Here's a movie analogy. You can think of the export definitions as the stars of the show, while shared definitions are the major supporting actors and the local definitions are the cast of thousands extras that are only there to make the stars look good. Or to put it in OOPS terms, export is like public, shared is like protected, and local attributes are private. Definitions other than local must always be fully qualified using the module.definition syntax. If the export definition you want to use resides in another module than the one you're currently editing, then you must first import its module to make all the exported definitions in that module available. Okay, let's briefly restate the things we've just gone over. One, the four fundamental definition types are Boolean, value, record set, and set. Two, any definition that receives parameters is a function. Three, export definitions are globally available. Four, shared definitions are only available within the module in which they reside. Five, local definitions are neither export nor shared and belong to the very next export or shared definition that follows them in code. This concludes this video. Thank you.